I don't know what to say, really. They don't give us respect, but we about to take it today. Why? We got one of the best. You better check your reference. One inch at a time. You find out life's this game of inches. Now, what are you going to do? I up, son. I up. Ladies and gentlemen, we're back at it. Blow the whistle. Uh, the best podcast talking about mental health, using our sports celebrities and guys, you know, to talk about mind strong situations that we all live in. I'm your host, D Brown. Hey, this is your co host over here, Dame Not Your Average Therapist. You know how we do it each and every week. Kill them both. Whistle. I'm ready. This is a good one, man. We're going to keep it rolling. It's a, it's a snowball effect with these type of uh, guests we be. Hey, we getting on. Hey, every week, man, it's getting bigger and better. I'm loving what we're doing. I'm, I'm really intrigued and interested about today's guest, man. Why are you intrigued? Well, you know, being in the field of mental health as we are, as therapists, and we have certain biases. Um, and when we're talking about coping and when we're talking about medicating, um, and dealing with mental health issues, we often talk about medications as well, but we don't talk about as much as the alternative treatments. There's always about the, the prescriptions, the, the pills, the popping. Um, so, and, and we don't talk about the, the harmful side effects of those medications versus alternative treatments and complementary treatments that, be, that can be useful, you know, to treat certain, you know, disorders, whether that's depression, anxiety, and a, and a host of others. So this episode will shed some light on that. Yeah, yeah. I think you spoke on something we, we talked about the coping. Yeah. I think we all have some sort of mechanism of coping when we're dealing with mm -hmm. pain or, or, or things associated with, right. with healing. It's just, what is that? Is what's it, your is vice? It, is it healthy? Yeah, what's your vice? Is it is it healthy enough for you that, you, you know, is it really a healing thing or is it, you know, prohibiting you from, from really growing? So, mm -hmm. you know, what are coping skills, the appropriate ones. I think our guest is, you know, he'll give us, you know, at least one that I think at he, least one. he's a big advocate right. for. And, um, you know, I understand his, his, his direction. That's why um, I understand his passion. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why I uh, selected and invited him to be a guest. Right. I'm grateful that he, he came on. So let's just bring him on and, and let's get it going and, and watch this, uh, listen to this fine young man drop some jewels. Man, season two. Season you know two. how we do. It's really good to be with you guys. <laughs> I appreciate the intro. Uh, I can hear you the whole time, man. Thank you. Yeah, man. I, you know, uh, big up to you, man. Like, you know, we, we were teammates for a short period of time, man. You had a, you were a teammate one of my best friends, though, Darren Howard in New Orleans, and he says hello. Um, but, uh, man, it was um, an impression that I had, you know, and just, uh, you know, being your teammate for that short period of time in Kansas City, man, and the passion that I saw. And as we follow each other on social media, I see the things that you've been advocating being an advocate for, man, is just impressive. And I said, this is the type of person, you know, a person I have a personal relationship with that I want to have on the show to talk about those things because it's very important on, on, on the, the subject that we're going to get ready to speak on. I'm going to give you the floor in a second, but absolutely, man, we, we, we definitely are excited to have you on the show. We appreciate it. 
It's great to be with you guys, man. It's a, a great topic. I appreciate y'all approaching it, and uh, let's get to it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Now, Cal, I'm, I'm Daniel, the co-host here for Bone Whistle. Thanks again for coming on and, and discussing this, this pertinent and impressionable topic, you know, that we, uh, that we often deal with. You know, as being a therapist, we often talk about, you know, coping and mental health overall and physical health as well. And I, and I think, you know, researching you and just, you know, understanding your background, looking at your career, I, I've seen the, 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 the benefits of your, your advocacy and your work that you're doing in the field that you're in right now, post-career. You know, and I definitely want to talk about that. But, but first and foremost, just, just talking about, you know, your career, you know, you played nine seasons, you know, all pro, you know, top seven level. overall. Seven overall, but nah, I can't forget that. Right, right, right. San Diego State, too. Yeah, yeah. Marshall Park? Marshall Park. Jack Gary is a big for players. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So so talk about kind of like this, this, what drove you to wanting to play ball, you know, just starting out in your early years, you know, what kind of led you to have that motivation to be, you know, the, the player that you were? Well, you know, I just had a passion for football, you know, like you guys. It was a passion. We couldn't put it down. This game is not easy. You can't just walk out there. Everybody thinks that we just walked out there and just made it to the team and all. You know, this is a dedication sport, you know, like no other. So I really thrived in that because that's just my personality. I take on challenges. Uh, I see the bully. I want to take him down. You know, there's no fear in, in, you know, what I perceive as uh, accomplishing, you know, it's the sky's the limit. So when I saw the opportunity that I was good at football, first you gotta be good at it, right? You can't can't just be anybody off the street. Um, But this was something I knew I was good at. And then if I worked really hard at it, then I I might be able to have an opportunity to live that dream. And that became more real to me every year as I went on in college at San Diego State. I didn't play football until I was a senior in high school. Uh, I wrestled, played baseball, did all the sports. You know, it was different back then. You don't have club, you didn't have club ball or, you know, travel ball, this, that, where all these kids are just football, football, football all the time. Yeah. So, right. yeah, I was fortunate to grow up in that era where I was on a skateboard, a surfboard, a snowboard. Uh, you know, we were fighting in the streets. We were running in the hills. We were camping. We were shooting right. guns. We were, you know, riding in the back of the truck on the freeway. Um, you know, we weren't putting masks on and, you know, worried about anybody's feelings out here you know we 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 had to get after it you know and uh we didn't have that opportunity to have feelings or anything like that so i was a person that was just naturally driven to the sport of football where the coach is yelling at you it's performance driven and i'm here to be the best yes sir you know and that's what took me as far as i got yeah man and and what a great career that you had and then a spinoff to that is the other side of 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 a football player, a person. And, you know, listening to you, it sounds like those, the things, that environment where you speak of the coaches and the, and the, co- the type of coaching, that was something that you were kind of gravitated to. You know, you needed that type of energy, if you will, that type of vibe as we, as we, as we speak, you know, uh, today. But, you know, off the field, that's, that, that's a little different. You know what I mean? Or is it? You know? Or is it? You know what I mean? Because, I don't know that it's- is, you know, what, what's the mentality with that? Yeah, go ahead. No, we kept, you know, we kept hearing that, right? Uh, you know, the real world is easy. You know, like, like you can't wait till you get to wait till, or wait till you get to the real world. You know, the real world isn't easy. The real world is hard. The real world is a challenge. The real world has a wife and kids and school and you know, uh, COVID and everything else. You know, when we were in that football world, that was just a total other world. You know. Uh, we all wish we could still be there, right? And uh, not living in this madness going on right now. And, um, you know, so the real world really hit hard for me as it does everybody else when you're done with that career. And then, you know, having, I think, that 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 determination and grit, you know, was something that was lost. You know, it takes us a long time to really, um, you know, find ourselves again. And, you know, 
they do their best, to, as you talked about with Big Pharma. I mean, we were the guinea pigs of it. You saw me there the last couple of years of my career in Kansas City, just trying to stick it out in the cold tub every day, you know. Yes. Uh, then those doctors would just pill, pill, pill. So I got lost for a while, and I was just really fortunate, you know. At the end of the day, I tell everybody to do the same thing. Get down and ask God for an answer. Oh, that was powerful. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Now, uh, Kyle, uh, one of the things that you kind of mentioned, in, in, in the, I guess maybe at the end of your career, just, I guess maybe struggling, just reading some of the, the articles and the research that we have done, you know, that, that you struggled as far as like with your mental health and, and having those ideations, those thoughts, whether it be homicidal, suicidal, things like that. Tell us a little bit about that, that thought process that you was going through and that struggle and, and how you were able to kind of cope through it you know, through a long, tumultuous season and a long, tumultuous career, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, sure. Right. I mean, it's, uh, you know, as we talked, it's, it's not easy. So you got to find your way again. You know, you got to find your way back into the world so that you can put that energy back into it, you know, into something else. And for me, you know, being where I was with, you know, I don't think I'm special. It's everybody out there. Whether you lose your job, you work so hard for in the streets or you know, a corporate gig or playing the NFL. And you got to find it all over again. That's not an easy process. You know, a lot of people go through that midlife crisis. That has to do with finding your purpose. You know, and for us, that comes at an early age. So, you know, really trying to, you know, navigate through all those waters of retirement to try and you know, find a focus and attention is really difficult. You know, the world has its way of trying to grab you out here in different ways. All these people want you, you know, money, your fame, all these other things. And, yeah, you know, you just kind of have to play the game and get over it eventually. And I was just truly fortunate to be able to have cannabis in my life the way it did to be able to fix my brain. I still deal with all these painful issues, you know. All these orthopedic pains are very, you know, disabilities like nobody. I, I, the, the pain, if I was to hand my pain over to just a regular dude out there, he'd be on his bed every day, he'd be bedridden, you know. But I'm, I'm able to push through this, and so many more people are finding that as well with cannabis. And, um, uh, you know, from my back injuries to my shoulders and ankles and knees and everything else, I mean, I would have played 15 years just like you guys would have gotten to stay healthy enough. Right. I was able to perform at our best. So, you know, it's a really difficult struggle from homicide, suicide, you know, the thought process, PTSD and all these things. Those are very real. Um, but I had real neurological issues that started to you know, really get bad. Vertigo constantly, light sensitivity off the charts, um, in and out of the hospital, the ER constantly, post-career, having seizures. Um, you know, real things that, that I could put this on and that something's going wrong up here. And I then, you know, was a part of the early stages, as you remember, D, when these people we were just finding out about this brain injury, you know, they kept it a secret from us for a long time, unfortunately. And that's been the biggest uh, changing factor is understanding this disease and giving it the medicine that it needs. Oh, man, and the thing, you're uh... A unicorn in a sense, because like you say, in that era is such a gladiator, it was such a gladiator era, era. And and you have a different perspective of of, of what the need is, you know, and uh, we were not you were not, you know, supported in talking about maybe your mental health, if you will, or you know, your body. You just about taking care of my body so I can perform. Right. Forget everything else. Mm -hmm. And, and because of that, you, you know, you go through the things and, 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 the, and the distorted thoughts and the, and the physical ailments and all those, those crazy things, you, the experiences that you have. Mm -hmm. You you flip the script, Kyle, and, and, and <laughs> you said, I need to get off. You talked about the pills. Mm -hmm. I need to get off. And at some point, you said, I need to stop with that. And I need an alternative because, you know, we all are dealing, like you said, you know, I want to feed it right now with still the rich person because of us. Right. It, it was finding out that, that, that it's not an alternative. This is not an alternative. The alternative isn't anything else. I have these injuries, you have your injuries. What should you be doing about it? That's what is the, the question. It shouldn't be a choice. This is not a choice. This is what does the human body need to operate correctly? And as I went into this experience of, you know, getting off of all these pills where I was taking all of them, you guys took them, 
we, the, the bottles just mount up on your countertop, you know, and uh, then it went into psych meds and all these other things that were these drugs that just made things worse mentally. Um, and when I was able to finally break free of those and, and find the strains of cannabis that really resolve these issues, uh, for seven years now, I've not had one episode of vertigo. Uh, I was in and out of the hospital constantly. It was one of the reasons I quit by last year of the NFL and just decided to walk away. I, I couldn't hit anybody anymore without, I was starting to go dizzy every time. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, so, and I had a history of concussions and uh, they were you know, documented, which was a rare thing back then. And, and so, you know, these things are real for me. And then finding these things in cannabis and that they resolve these things li literally immediately. You know, one night, the biggest one was just finding these strains that deal with, uh, you could fix your light sensitivity, your eyes, you know, these very particular uh, applications to getting rid of neuropathy and plantar fasciitis. These, these injuries that, that plague athlete careers were the things that were starting to surface for me that were way beyond just like, oh, I smoke some weed and I can sleep and eat, you know, which is all it was when I was you know, only able to understand this plant for its, you, you know, being able to get it from random sources in other states. Mm -hmm. Moving back to California, going through the program, Prop 215 allowed me as a medical patient to try all these strains and boom, hit one night, resolved light sensitivity. I hadn't been to the movies in seven years with my family, couldn't watch TV, nothing. Sunglasses, I paid thousands of dollars for glasses to shave my eyes so I could wear them in public and 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 I'd have a hat on constantly. I don't need to have I don't need glasses now for over seven years since this experience happened where it was immediate. I mean I ran around the house that night looking into uh, light bulbs because I couldn't believe what was happening. And uh, my wife was like, what is what's going on? And I was like, I can I, my eyes don't hurt it. My eyes didn't hurt me. You know, it was amazing to have that experience. It was a miracle to have that experience. And then moving on past that to all the other orthopedic issues that uh, I've been able to address with cannabis. Come on, man. You, know, you can't give me a pharmaceutical that I can't give you the exact experience with in cannabis, period. And it's better. Wow. Oh, so, so we're, we're appreciating this, this information. Like, this, this is awesome. I, I, I love it. And I read something where you where, where it was quoted where you said, you know, pretty much marijuana and cannabis pretty much saved your life. And after you you broke it down just now, I mean, like that literally, you know, is the case. So why why do you think it's been like a tug of war, you know, when it comes to sports and just just marijuana in itself? Why do you think it's been a battle, you know, where where you get these pills, you know, like you said, a, a whole. You know, kind of, yeah, yeah. of of medications that are known to have those side effects, long term effects. You know, yeah. well after you finish playing, but marijuana can do the exact same thing as far as healing purposes, not just band aiding uh, an ailment, but actually healing. Why do you think it's been like a, a battle? You know, within the medical community and the sports uh, field. Well, uh, the answer to that is that they don't want us to know about our own bodies. That's the answer. It's the truth. The number one regulatory system in the human body is the endogenous cannabinoid system. Not the Vicodin system, not the Flexerol system, not the Lortab system, not the uh, Naproxen system. None of these things should be going into a human's body. We have an endogenous cannabinoid system. It regulates everything in us. We are made of water and cannabinoids. <laughs> That's what they don't want us to know. And they, want, they don't want us to know why they have a patent on this as a neuroprotector. And that's because in the center of your brain lies your cannabinoid system's center, your Christ. And that's what they don't want us to know about, is that God's inside of us. We have our own Christ. If we believe in it and we exercise it and we empower it, it can help us live long, productive lives and continue to be good people here on this planet. Unfortunately, these people are evil as shit. <laughs> after us, you know, and that is the truth. Okay, I'm not taking one pharmaceutical in seven years, 
And I have saved so many people's lives down to my own kids' lives with this. My daughter just got diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. She, well, They said she was at a 600 count blood sugar level for over three months. We, They were telling us, oh, she's got this or that. She's at that age where puberty is taking effect. I'm like, something's wrong with my child here. You guys need to figure this out. Yeah. And then all of a sudden she has a bad episode, goes to emergency room. And now she's, um, they say she should have went into a coma and died um, it, it, where she was at. And they asked us, what are we doing with her? And we tell them, we tell them all. We're giving them CBD constantly, every day, because we know the importance of that. We know how it empowers the immune system. We know how it empowers the human body, especially the child for development. I've gotten CBD down to Pylon 7 on 7 events to try and get them. They've allowed me this conversation and, you know, more people are. And, uh, you know, we've, I had to go into the product uh, area of developing products and you know both spaces of CBD, now THC, and uh, rallying our voices because they don't want us to know. They don't want to know about these resolutions because they don't make money on it. And that's the truth. And it helps us live longer. And as everybody, I think you clearly see out here, you know, these guys are dead focused on you know making everybody not live live longer. You know, mm-hmm. just survive for another day with a mask on. That, that, that's not a way to live. How do we make it as humans to where we are here today? And that is through understanding our own human health. Man. How? Did you eat? Great word. Bunch of jewelry dropped just now. Yeah, I'm just saying, we only want to blow the whistle, but we don't want to mess up the flow here. <laughs> <laughs> the jewelry that you're dropping, man. Uh, but this. Talking about the saving of the lives, uh, it's what you're doing. It's exactly what you're doing. Uh, you know, I'm in, I'm that I believe in, in what you believe in, uh, especially when you you talk about um, you know an alternative from what we've been taught, right? You know, and right. what we've been given and mm-hmm. kind of conditioned to to do and think and, and respond to it. Uh, you know, I believe uh, the information given, man, is, is not only helpful. Um, here and now, but it's, it's going to be helpful worldwide, man, because it's something that, like you say, it's, uh, you know, I'm not into, you know, I'm into the political thing, but I won't speak on it, but, you know, it is it is about, you know, life preservation, I, I believe, uh, in, in your own, you know, if you're not talking about anybody else, it's your own life preservation. And I, and I, I think that's a, a key component in, in our, our physical health. Mm-hmm. And as we're talking about it here today, it's, as well as our mental health, like this, this this item, this product, is something that's you know been around for a while. It's it's long well, time. You know everything else is kind of has to be formulated and, and, and chemical mixed and things of that nature. And so you know it's it's very easy to get those points in what you're saying. It's very easy to get those points in what you're saying. And the fact that you're allowing even your own family to experience this, you know, it, it speaks of the. Of the belief and the confidence yes. in the outcome, and like you said, it saves a lot. Some folks are not going to because of just their own ways, and the ones that are listening to this are just setting their own ways. They're, they're not going to pick the value out of what you're saying. But I don't want to. I don't want to forget them. I would, you know what I mean? Why? <laughs> your, your own human health you know i mean right. it, I, I, i'm not political I, I i didn't vote for trump i didn't vote for biden these people are ridiculous uh these old white men are i, I'm, I figured you guys would be on to that by now but uh, I, I, i'm i'm tired of all the lies from the lies from the nfl the lies from all these politicians we need to get back to understanding who we are we are we are uh, powerful people, it, your beings, these these vessels have un, uh, un, unmeasurable amounts of electricity in them. Mm-hmm. And, and we are not accessing these things from stem cells to all the other plant-based medicines. Wow. Um, you know, Megatron got up there and he's talking about it. We're all, we're all having this experience. And, you know, we've, we've started this brand, uh, we, we call it Revenant. We've got our lives back. It's me, it's Jim McMahon, it's Ricky Williams, it's Evan Britton. Um, but our community is even greater. We're, we're bringing on more guys with this project because we're trying to get this message out there. You can get your life back through empowering your human body 
not from what this plant does, from, mm -hmm. from this, however you want to perceive it. Every one of these pharmaceutical companies is fully invested in creating synthetic cannabinoids right now. Every one of them. Mm -hmm. You can Google it. That is their main focus. They know it. That's been the missing link to every one of their pharmaceuticals is the cannabinoid compilation uh, to be able to interface with the human body and mm -hmm. interact with the cannabinoid system. Again, these things have just been masking agents, preying upon this or that receptor to numb us up, make us high, and forget about what's going on with us. You know, not addressing these injuries. I could have probably avoided three surgeries, um, you know, resolved so many other things without uh, having to stay off the field. I could have been on the field more and for more years. Uh, I understand this now, having now I'm 46, and I don't take one of those pills they gave me. Not one for seven years. Wow. Not an aspirin, not an Aleve, none of them. Wow. Do you think? I, I don't want to say from a political standpoint because NFL, it, it is politics within the NFL as well. Do you think because of the benefits of cannabis and marijuana and the, the longevity in your career, you know, the, the younger you are, the better you are, the cheaper they can pay, the more money they, that they can make. So they don't want you to be in the NFL that long. They don't want to have to pay those large sums of money when they can get it for cheaper, right? So do you yeah. think that's kind of like the thought process in that, as far as just doping you up, like you say, and just kind of have you in this daze or this this numb feeling or this, it's almost like it's almost like creating a case, you know, yeah. you know, you know, all that stuff is documented. Right. So when it comes time for you to get paid, for instance, then that's the reason why you don't you want to get, you know, they don't mm -hmm. want to pay stuff like that. So right. I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm with you on that one. Yeah, look at the look at the CBA, the, the latest CBA still carried over split contracts, still carried over a three year or three and a half year minimum before you're a vested player uh, and a rookie salary cap. I mean, th these things are insane, man. I mean, they're using NCAA to now we can finally get paid in the NCAA. I don't have to get, you know, go around taking money from agents and get busted. But the, these guys have created a system here, a, a racket around the quarterbacks and all these other people at the top level. It is the, uh, the the antithesis of what it is they continue to talk about right now with inclusion and acceptance and this and that and the other. Well, that, that when you get to the numbers, doesn't add up to how the NFL is going to receive over $500 billion here over the next five years from this game. And the players are only going to receive one of it. And they've got to split it up and the top tier gets all of it. And everybody else down here, these free agents that get signed, uh, you have the starting running back of multiple teams this year that have to fight and claw his way to get in that door with probably still a $20,000 to $50,000 signing bonus only and still living in his mom's house and he's going to be the starting running back on a National Football League team this season. Break an NFL record, maybe, uh, just like uh, Lindsey did in, uh, in Denver, you know? And, and yet, guys like John Elway are still cashing in millions and millions and millions of dollars while the rest of the team suffers and struggles to just keep making it, you know? Yeah. And that's just not acceptable to me, never has been. You know that since we were in those meetings with Gene Upshaw. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, you, Kyle KT was always a guy. He didn't take any match from anybody, man. He's a stand up guy. And that's what you respect about. You know, not only right. one of the best players as far as, you know, not just, you know, Lyman, 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 I wanted to mention, you know, I mean, he was, he was just as good of, as a run block as he was a pass block. Right. Even, even when he had the, the back injury and all, man. So, but he's that same stand up still. I'm good at, you know, I, I want to be great at everything else off the field as well, man. And, uh, just what you're pushing and what the product you're pushing and the faith that you're pushing is what I'm, you know, that's a, that's the vibe that I'm riding, man. So I appreciate, you know, everything you're doing. With, with the, with the Green Iron Grace, is, is, uh, is that something, uh, when you were assisting with the former players, were they allowing you to really kind of have a great influence on that decision as far as, you know, like you said, the medical assistance with, with, with the cannabis? Yeah, hundred uh, percent. Any of this has changed because I've been there. I've been banging on their door. You know, we just had a big meeting. I'm not supposed to talk about not last year. You know, uh, I think maybe the MTA is uh, up now. I think it's your time. But they called a big old meeting out in Los Angeles. 
top of the hotel, took over the whole thing. I gave a full PowerPoint presentation to the entire medical board of the NFL, which consists of the head of uh, neurology and neuromedicine for the United States military, the head of emergency medicine for the United States military, the head of neurology here in Tennessee, who's now the chief medical officer uh, of the National Football League, and a number of other people. And then the whole union was on the other side. And uh, I gave a whole PowerPoint presentation here to these guys. And right after that, they then announced they're not going to suspend players anymore for drug testing and testing positive for cannabis. Um, and so that was a huge deal. But, you know, now they're back out here. They still haven't followed up. They, it's almost just lip service, as it always is. They want to hear what's going on. And then they want to just do it their way. You know, and I've proposed study after study to them. They will not allow me. Uh, they just recently announced they provide a million dollar grant to cannabis studies out there. Uh, I've applied for those. They won't allow me. Um, and so, you know, I know where they're going with this. It's just another, okay, Kyle, you know, we're going to listen to you. And, you know, we're going to, as they told me, it's going to take some time. You're right, but it's going to take some time. I, I don't, I don't, I don't accept that. You know, we've got 10 youth football players dead this year still. And, and 10 more are potentially going to die before football season is over with. That's a statistic that is written since Pop Warner was created. And they don't have to. Studies that have been done on cannabis at CBD alone was applied to these kids. They wouldn't die in these situations. And, wow. uh, you know, these things are just unacceptable to me. I don't know why they are to them, but they are, unfortunately. And so, you know, they know. They've told me, Kyle, keep going. They're a business, you know, at the end yeah. of the day. And they all understand that as men in these business worlds uh, working for their paycheck, you know. So they keep telling me always on the side, keep doing it, Kyle. We appreciate what you're doing. We just can't, we can't associate. We can't accept that. We can't say we're with that. Like, get, the, get out of here, dude. This is, uh, people are dying and we don't need to. That's, it's unnecessary for people to be dying right yeah. now playing football. Period. What we know about cannabis, not from me, from all the research and the government patent as a neuroprotector. Wow. Yeah. Man. Uh, uh, Speaking the truth, man. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Parents, basically, to be on the side of right. Right. You know, you talk about the association. Yeah. And, and that's so true. You know, it, it's it, they're big and damaging the association mm -hmm. instead of being more on the side of, of right. Yeah. You know, studies and evidence is showing you that. You know what was before was very detrimental to your health, mm -hmm. and what the future can, can be. Right, with, with with a whole different point of view. Right, and but we don't want to adopt that. And he speaks of even he's in the mess, he's in the gut of it right now. Right, right. now being turned away. Right, but imagine what you know, outsiders. You know the perception of those people and the treatment to those folks. Right, so and, it's just it's just a matter of you know you know like I said, you are on side, right? And and the thing is. The, the perception that people that don't engage in marijuana don't understand the benefits of marijuana. They, they, they often cast those people that do engage on a regular basis as something's wrong with them. They're crazy. You know, they, they're talking about Rick Williams like that. They're talking about you, Kyle, like that. With, with the whole situation. You, 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 you want me in the streets? You want me in the streets? I don't think so. I don't think you want people out here because that's what's happened in our community. And we right. just saw that with our brother that went in there and killed five people because they weren't treating him properly in his mm. concussion case and giving him the acknowledgement of this brain injury and what it truly is. And he showed it to him. And wow. these things have been apparent to me that, that that could be me. And that scares the hell out of me. But it doesn't scare them. And they like it. It gives a lot of, oh, wow, this is a dangerous sport. Now everybody's going to like it more because we're so dangerous. Mm. You know, we don't have to live this way. We don't have to live with these masks on and get a vaccine. What are we doing all this for? It's ridiculous. We have to empower the, the human body. It, it, it's built to withstand over 2 million viruses floating around out here that are out here daily. Right. They're trying to kill you. Uh, so, you know, with all of that and all that they did to us and all the drugs they tried to give us, to now we have this experience in cannabis where we're we're getting our lives back. We're thriving. We're growing a community that is going to be, uh, have to be dealt with, you know, in cannabis. That, that's, that's what's going on. You know, at the end of the day, I get fired up and I appreciate it, but, you know, everybody trying to fire me up, but, it, you know, I, 
I know this plant so well now that I am beyond confident and will put everything, including my family, my wife and my kids, everything on this plant. And if we are willing to do this, then people maybe will start standing up for it a little bit more, accepting it a little bit more and understand mm -hmm. this is not about getting hot. I'm a father, I'm a husband. I got three now multi-million dollar companies because I got my life back and I'm not stopping. I'm not going down the road that all these other guys are going down and neither is Jim and neither is Ricky or Evan or Boo or any of these other guys out here, you know, or you guys, you know, we have right. to stop. Absolutely. That's right. Awesome, man. Awesome, man. I'm talking about I love it. passion. Yeah, I love it. Absolutely. It's all accurate. So you answered the question when I said, can you, do you take that? Is there a difference? Yeah. On the field off? Yeah. I mean, be prime example of no. Absolutely. No, absolutely not. You know what I'm saying? KT, man, I appreciate your time, man. You love your heart. Love your passion. Yes. I'm going to support everything you got going on, absolutely. man. You do the same. I'm here. If you have a need, just a... A year to talk, man, and get rowdy with, man. Just, just give me a call, man. But I appreciate, I appreciate what you're doing. Keep changing lives, man. That's what it's about, man. The legacy that you had in the NFL for all those all pro years is great, and we can acknowledge that. But the true hero and the legacy that you're creating now is truly Hall of Fame. Yeah, you know what I mean. In, in life, so man, just keep doing that and changing lives and, and make, making people aware of, of other things, so they can have a free choice. If, if that's all mm -hmm. that you're giving them is a free choice, you know, not to be conditioned by somebody else's or some, someone else's agenda, then that's that's a blessing in itself. So we appreciate you for your heart and your time. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. At the end of the day, again, I got down and I asked God for a resolution. This is the resolution. And for seven years now, it has proved itself over and over again to be undoubtedly the resolution that we all need to understand. And uh, thank you guys for giving me that opportunity as everybody else has given me this opportunity to speak my truth. But my mm -hmm. truth is your truth because it is the same thing behind these eyes that we share wow. in this uh, relation to God that we all have. And I uh, wow. truly appreciate it. Thank you so much. Love you all, man. And yeah. uh, brotherhood yeah. is getting stronger and all these crazy brains are going to go away. That's for sure. So 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 when so when we get a, another album because I, I, I noticed you have you started a record label when, when you coming out with another album it's soon it's coming I'm back in Nashville now I had to move my kids back here and do the back in uh, real schools that you know that I grew up in kind of not still the same still frustrated mm -hmm. as hell but back in Tennessee get back to okay. my music and uh, going to be doing a lot of good stuff with that here coming up. Music's always been a great passion and uh, appreciate yeah. that. Uh, it's something that's another thing that's always kind of been there for me. And, uh, you know, Kansas City, we, 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 we set it off there, man. We've got, we've got Money Bo out there. We've got Tomba out there. Yeah. Uh, I mean, just that team alone, uh, you can see what music does when you really spread music around, you know, as mm -hmm. Mark said. You know, Bob, Bob is uh, a big influence in my life. You know, there's Bob right there. Oh, man. And, uh, Love it. Love it. Bob's huge. You know, huge in my life. And uh, the more music that people can be around together, the you know, faster we can wrap this thing up, man, and get things moving in a good direction. Music there. Music yeah. there. We'll hear it. Absolutely. Thank y'all. Appreciate you, Kay. All right. All right, guys. Have All right. a great day. Stay easy. All right. Ha uh ha. -huh. Kyle Turley. Yo, my man. My man. Right. Cause, cause he's normally only known for throwing the helmet. Throwing the opponent's helmet across the field because he hit the quarterback. Was it Drew Brees? Was it Drew Brees? Or was it, uh, I'm not even sure the quarterback. It was when he was playing with New Orleans. That's what the motivation was. Yeah, like he, he was protecting he's someone. He's protecting. He's passionate. Y'all, 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 y'all heard it. You see, you, you, see see now, man. you see it. You know, like everyone else, he's, he's, you know, talking to the kind of help those are, those are his questions. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Man. man, I'm all for it, man. And we're not, we're not saying, we're not being here saying, you know, I'm happy for everyone to, to smoke marijuana mm -hmm. and, 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 or whatever the liquid form, whatever it might be, the CBD. We're not, we're not saying, in a recreational use. This is what you're talking yeah. about health purposes. We're yeah. talking about mental health, physical health purposes. Right. You know what I mean? Like, that's okay. 
like, yeah, you know, just like popping the food. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Popping the asshole. Popping the asshole. Like, in the league and all those things. We just right. talk about those type of things. Absolutely. We're talking about the recreational use of it. So we don't mm-hmm. want you to think Brother Wilson is saying, hey, you know, give my kid, you know, fifth grade a joint, you know, and, and let him go, whatever. No, I'm not right. saying those things. Um, but, you know, let's keep it in perspective and then respect what we're talking about. Right. It really does um, um, help to, to hear him give us the information. Mm-hmm. Even from a statistical and factual right. standpoint about Absolutely. what cannabis has done for him and for others compared to what, you know, what his previous life and regimen yeah. was. I mean, just facts are facts. You know, you got to go with the black and white, you know, so. Um, okay. man. Yeah, man. I mean, it's, it, uh, again, it's, it's more so of, of developing a, a regimen, a treatment alternative or option that's going to address the same issues as if, you know, if you have a headache, we don't second guess popping the Tylenol or an aspirin, but do we actually know what's made in that? You know, those chemicals that are utilizing that, what's the long-term effects? Do we know how long it takes for the medicine to get through the process? Right, right. You know, we don't know those things. Right, we just, we just know it, it, it does what it's supposed to do, but we don't, we can find out. Yeah, there's a lot of resources. Yeah. Yes, a lot of resources now. Well, yeah, that's just a temporary excuse. You know? Yeah, there's a lot of resources to be able to, you know, get the answer that you mm-hmm. want. You know, and, and research, you know, like research-based, evidence-based. Mm-hmm. Uh, do some of that type right. of research so that you know you know what you're reading is authentic and real. Mm-hmm. You know, that you can believe in what the studies are showing. Right. Um, <laughs> man, hey, we we'll just we, we just reduce some stigmas here. There's a lot of stigma. Uh, whistle. There's a lot of whistle that I have. Long whistle. Mental health, physical health, mind strong. Hey, live a life of love. Nah. Hey, that's that, that that's a good catchphrase. Blow the whistle, right? Keep blowing. Man, one, they blow it. Hey, five months. Shout out to five months. Love it. Love the artist. Love the artist. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So we definitely vibe with you now, Kyle. Appreciate you dropping by. Check us out. Check us out on Instagram, go to YouTube, subscribe. Mm-hmm. Get our, get our Gmail account if you have a personal uh, question. You got some questions. Keep it confidential. Yeah. Y'all, y'all, y'all want to hear something? You want to hear a conversation, a topic? You know, let us know. Give, let, give, give us our, you know, feedback. You know, we, we give the people what they want. We, we bring in these special guests. It's coming. It's coming. You know, so make sure y'all, y'all hit us up on all of our avenues, whether that's social media, whether that's Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, uh, Anchor, uh, what else we got? Email, hit us on the Gmail, direct question, you know, we're available. Yeah. We, we're, we're talking here, you know, we do two male therapists, just purple unicorns. Trying to do the right Even thing. though we're in black and green, you know, purple that might be purple. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that might work. You might have to look at that. You might have to look at that. Check it out. Thanks, Check us out next week. Coming back at you with another dope performance, with another dope guest, with some dope therapists. Right? You know what we do. We just walk on. <laughs>